Big B's Daily Vlogs. All right, another episode of the Daily Podcast and the Daily Vlogs with me, Eric B. Today I got a special guest, again, from the Fox TV hit, The Cleaning Lady. Yes, you guys are wondering, who else do I have? I have Cosima Cabrera coming on today, who played Gabby in two episodes, episode five, I think it was um, the Icebox and then the Lion's Den at the same time. She's going to join us in a few minutes. But first, as we always do, we got to get this started. So let's get this started. Welcome everyone, it's the Daily Podcast and the Daily Vlogs, and I am your host, Eric B. Happy Monday to everyone. Happy first day of the hour that was stolen from us could have sworn we voted all that off, right? We voted to get rid of daylight savings, but here we are and we still have, and you can tell from the bags under my eyes that it's still here. But today we have a special guest coming on with us. We have Cosima Cabrera from the Fox TV hit, The Cleaning Lady. I'm ready to bring her in. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. You ready? All right, she's giving me a thumbs up, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, here we have Cosima Cabrera. Hi. Giving you a little uh, applause button there. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Happy Monday. It is Monday. It is the first day of, I guess, daylight savings. How are you, how's, that, how's that treating you down in L.A.? I honestly had no idea it was daylight savings. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's daylight savings. Yeah. Good to know. No, yeah, I mean, it was like last yesterday, last night. I'm like, oh, my God, it's seven o'clock. And it's like, oh, my God, it's eight o'clock. It's like, what's going on here? What, 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 why is it going so, so fast? But Cosima, thank you for jumping on. And like I do with all my guests, please, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Cosima. <laughs> Most people call me Cosi, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Cosima Cabrera, who plays Gabby from the Fox TV hit, um, The Cleaning Lady. Um, we're going to talk about The Cleaning Lady in a second, but there's a couple things that I want to bring up. Um, a couple achievements that you had as an actress. And first of all, let's start off with um, what made you want to be an actress? I started acting when I was six, and um, I was actually a child actor. And I watched a lot of TV when I was five. Um, I watched Friends, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and The Simpsons a lot, which I guess is unusual for a five-year-old. But those were, (laughs) I had this tiny little TV with 10 channels, and those were the channels (laughs) I watched. Um, And um, what I remember was that I just wanted to be on the TV, too. Um, But, and so that was always, like, how I remember I started acting. Like, I grew up in L.A., so my mom um, got me an agent, and I started out with background work. Um, I got my SAG card when I was seven. Um, So I was was really young. Um, But, um, yeah, it, it wasn't until later that my mom told me that what what actually happened, although all of that was true, but my dad had a heart attack when I was five. And I think my mom was starting to think that if I acted, it might help pay tuition because, um, my dad could possibly die. And, um, Mm -hmm. and so she asked me like, Oh, do you want to act? And then that's what like ignited a flame and I was like, yes, yes. And I remember just like saying over and over again, I want to be on the TV right now, right now, right now. Um, (laughs) um, And I remember when I did like my first commercial, I was like, I was six and I thought it was going to appear on the air literally that night. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I learned it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that and when my mom explained to me that story, things started to make sense because I was like, what five-year-old can draw a connection that, like, the people in the TV 
are actually human beings, you know? And I realized after it it was because my mom explained that to me. (laughs) Nice. <laughs> what was the commercial? Do, can you can you share what the commercial was? Do you remember what the commercial was? It was for Comerica Bank. Okay. 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 Yeah. It's nice. How was it? I mean, you know, you growing up in LA and you just mentioned that your mom asked you if you wanted to get into acting and you said you were watching all these TV shows and you said, I want to do it. Is that just something that if you lived outside of LA, do you think you still would have thought that way? Probably. Um, I mean, growing up in L.A., I guess, is, like, pretty inherent in, like, my like my DNA, I guess. And that definitely influenced my story. Uh, my parents probably, they are who they are because they, my dad grew up mostly in L.A. He was born in Mexico, but he moved to East L.A. when he was four. My grand, my or my mom grew up in Northern California and then moved down to L.A. So it's like L.A. is pretty inherent to like all of our stories. Yeah. But so it's hard to imagine me living anywhere else, actually, or growing up anywhere else. Uh, I mean, um, but yeah, it's like I, I, I. I I don't see myself having wanted to do anything else um, growing up, if that makes sense. Yes. yes. I mean, you know, because you always hear like actors or actresses, they always either, it's either if you're not going to New York to be a Broadway actor, you're moving down to LA and you're trying to find your, your way in LA. But you growing up in LA, you found your niche. You found something you wanted to do, and and you're you're. I've seen some of your clips, and you're really good at what you do. Um, 2015, you have the award of merit, special mention at the Indie Fest for a short called "The Ninth Girl," right? Yes. Something you produced, right? You want to talk about that? I did. I did do that. Yeah. Um, that was a, a project that I was. Um, really passionate about it was about sexual assault and um that was a topic I really cared about um so I I when I actually when I auditioned I initially wasn't a producer but um the director asked me um if I wanted to take on the role of producer and start submitting it to film festivals and it got into a couple festivals um so that was a really cool project to work on it was really meaningful how hard is it to work i know six i watched a couple shorts when it comes to making films how difficult is it making a short producing short versus a full length because you got to try to get your your word out in six minutes you have to try to let the crowd know hey this is what's going on and we're letting you know in six minutes this is exactly what i want you to see yeah that's true um that is a challenge of it. And this one was actually a silent film, um, surprisingly enough. So that adds its own layers and dimensions as well. And those are, those are a cool, I mean, there's a couple shorts that I've seen that, like you said, it's just the acting and you're putting more into the acting versus me telling you what I want you to hear. I mean, when you said silent, I'm pretty sure it was, just you acting, you acting out what was going on and letting us feel what you were feeling. And, and to me, I, I would I love watching shorts just because there's more into what a short's in. And then I started thinking about like, God, what did you go through to think of this and have to put it out in six minutes? That's that's like crazy, crazy in a good way, right? It is. Yeah. definitely in a good way yeah yeah um and then what else well i mean you 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 definitely you know your your character in the cleaning lady is just one of those like the cleaning lady is epitome to a lot of you know not just the filipinos but a lot of immigrants in the united states and in that one episode where you did the icebox episode where you're just a normal day you're going to work you guys are having fun on the bus doing what you normally do and then you know you guys get raided and then now you're like you how you your your mom sense comes in you're like yeah, i got to pick my kids up they're at school and but here i am in 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 this box how was it how did you find you know gabby in that situation 
Um, my dad was an immigration lawyer, so I grew up hearing stories about undocumented immigrants getting deported, him working on cases, him have, having a lot of difficulty getting judges to, you know, grant, grant lawful permanent residency, green cards, whatever, you know, him putting his heart and soul into these cases and sometimes it going num- nowhere, sometimes it going somewhere. So it was a really personal role for me to enact. Um, and my dad actually passed away in 2019. And when he did, I had to close down his business. So I was basically in charge of, um, you know, his, his assistant, um, for two weeks after he passed away, returned files to the clients and everything. And he had over a hundred open cases when he passed away. So she was able to return like about 75 files and um, there were still files that were remaining, that, and then there were files that fell through the cracks, and like it, it was, it was, it was a lot. Like some of his clients, I did get deported. Um, I think one of his clients, yeah, what my my dad's mentee, he mentored a lot of other lawyers, went to court. I think the day he died, and then they find out, they found out like at court that his lawyer had passed away, their lawyer had passed away and they were like crying. And so it's like, I got a taste a little bit of what it was like to be my dad. Um, in those weeks after he passed away. And I mean, even before he passed away, I did help him out with cases. I did translations of legal documents and everything. Um, but, and my mom was actually an immigration attorney herself when she was in her early, I think, her 20s. So, you know, she didn't do that line of work um, when she was raising me. But um, stories of undocumented immigrants have always been really dear to my heart because I was raised by an immigration lawyer. So I already had, like, a lot of heart for this character. Yeah. And I also did watch a couple documentary series on Netflix as well to prep for this um, living undocumented and then immigration nation. I recommend those for anyone. Um, But yeah, it was a lot of, you know, that type of research and, and just the personal experience I have with my dad that influenced my preparation for this role. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of those roles where, you know, and and in my past interviews with, with Miranda, I said episodes like that makes us realize what immigrants are going through on a day to day. You know, you're always looking over your shoulder. um, And when you do get caught, the the things that you don't think of is who's going to take care of my kids. Who's going to you know pick my kids up. It made that situation real for the ones who doesn't go through it. And it's like every day, these poor immigrants who are working here and just trying to make a living for their family, just trying to support their family has to look over their shoulder every day. But they also, you know, sometimes they don't think about what's plan B just in case something like this happens. Um, And that episode, it was just like, you know, you and Martha, you guys were just the way you guys were with each other like i got your back i'll make sure you know martha's character fee was like you know i'll make sure your kids are picked up it's that closeness it's like wow this this show you know it's just like it's it's on another level and it's one it's one of those levels where it's not just the main characters it's the supporting cast that's around it that's making the show and it's one of those shows where it's like i'm really hoping for a season two just hopefully we see Gabby come back and it's like, you know, Gabby needs to come back in season two. And it's like, show us with Gabby and her kids there. Right. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Um, yeah. Cause there was a little nod to it in episode five when, when they say I'll, I'll look after your kids and everything. So I yeah. want, I want to see what happens there. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Um, who was your, you're growing up when you said, okay, I'm going to be an actress. You were, you're, you got acting at six. Was there an actor or actress or was there anyone that you looked up to that influenced you to be, I want to be just like them? Um, 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I really looked up to Sean Penn and I also really looked up to Drew Barrymore. Nice. um, Who's like, I feel like she's such an underrated actress, but um, because she's known mostly like for rom coms, but and this is like such a corny movie to have as your favorite movie. But my favorite movie has never been kissed, and um, I've seen that like twenty eight times. Yes. Um, And then yeah, Ever After, like that was that was a movie I watched with my dad. I also watched Never Been Kissed with my dad, Um, but yeah. I I thought Drew Barrymore was like, you know, I I, I could see myself in her. Like, like uh, I think there was a documentary. It was called My Date with Drew about the guy who like wanted to have a date with Drew Barrymore. Um, and they talked about like how she is in real life, and it's a combination of her character in Never Been Kissed and Charlie's Angels. Like yeah. the dorkiness of Never Been Kissed. Like she was she was a lit major who I think was really into Shakespeare and she was a writer and she was this big nerd. And I like, I could see myself in, in her and that character. And I think that's what like a really strong actor does is like people can see themselves in that character that they're playing and they get to relate to that person. Um, Yeah. Which like, this just reminded me speaking of Shakespeare when I was in college uh, I was I double majored in theater and literature and I uh, my thesis for my lit major was banishment in Shakespeare nice and I didn't really realize it until afterwards but I realized that uh, banishment is essentially deportation yeah and it's just a you know older name for it and I I didn't really realize until after I had finished writing the thesis that I was like partly drawn to that topic on a a subconscious level having been raised by an immigration lawyer and um one of the things I talk about in um in my my thesis was like over and over and over again it's repeated in Shakespeare the theme that banishment is worse than death So I wanted to explore why that is and um, what I what I discovered was like because you're it's like just the way it is today. Like it it was a little bit exacerbated back then because there was such an unknown like they didn't have airplanes or anything like that. So like going elsewhere was like a complete unknown and then transportation was like you know, carriages on like rocky pebbles and stuff like that. But it was the, um, the idea that you're going to be disattached from your loved ones. And it's like, uh, there was like a theme that I saw of like half of your heart, you're being split open. Half of your heart is like being split. Yeah. And I think that really, I, I mean, I wish I had had the foresight to connect that to like immigration today, but it, it does really echo like what we talk about in the cleaning lady and everything of the, um, the separation of families and like how part of you, like if you're separated from your child, it's like a part of your heart is like taken away from you. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, we went through that, you know, not we, but you know, us went through that just a few years ago when, you know, they were trying to come over and they were taking the families away from the kids. I mean, it's, it's, the cleaning lady is one of those stories where it's not false in, in a lot of senses because it's really happening. We just don't really see it. And then when we finally do see it, it's kind of like, wow, this is really going on. This is, you know, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking when I see that, when I see kids who are not with their families and they're sitting alone on a cold concrete. And in that episode five, that pretty much, you know, you guys pretty much showed what was really going on. Right. Totally. Yeah. And I, I was so honored to be a part of it. And, and, you know, I, I, you're right. Like this is happening every day. And I think more stories need to be told about that. Yeah. Um, to shed light on that. And so I really tip my hat off to the cleaning lady for choosing to go into that. Um, I want to see more stories about undocumented immigrants portrayed in television. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, this, this is a positive thing also. It's one of those things where 
for the longest time, like I just said earlier, we didn't know this was happening. You know, you hear these stories, but then now it's being shown on cleaning ladies. We're watching it on the news. We're seeing it day to day. And it's like it's it's one of those things that it needs to be addressed. And we need to definitely find a solution and fix it to where everyone's happy in, in, in a good sense. And, you know, it's just one of those things where you know, the government needs to do a better job on trying to figure out what they can do to help, you know, these people who are just trying to come over and make a better life for themselves. Definitely. You speak, um, you speak a couple languages uh, besides English, there's Spanish, French, and Italian, correct? I do. Yeah. I um, had a multilingual upbringing. Um, my parents uh, both speak different languages. Um, so they wanted me to be multilingual. So they sent me to a French elementary school. Wow. So I went to um, Le Lycée International um, de Los Angeles, which is, it's Lila. It's in Los Feliz. It's like a French immersion school. So I started speaking French when I was three. That's where I went to elementary school. And then, um, you know, even though my dad is from Mexico, I think was too lazy to speak Spanish um, around me. So, so my mom sent me to an Argentinian school on the weekends to learn Spanish. And then um, I actually started learning Italian during the pandemic. Um, oh, wow. It was actually inspired from acting because I, I think I was going out for a couple Italian roles and it's so similar to French and Spanish. It's so it was just like an easy ad and um yeah that's that's how I like made my living as an actor was like tutoring French and Spanish and then I started tutoring Italian too oh so nice came, came in handy yes uh, unbeknownst to my parents it would be my like side hustle <laughs> just want to throw this out there you mentioned Los Feliz in uh, Los Angeles and this is my Disneyland nerd knowledge right here it's that area is where Walt Disney first had a home and he first did the Walt Disney Studios um, in Los oh. Feliz. Yeah, so it's just one of those things. Why I know, I don't know. I'm a big Disney cool. fan, so. Um, I didn't know that and I live in Los Feliz right now. Oh, so. nice. Every time cool. I drive down to LA, I would say, there's the, there's the exit right there, right off five. Just got to go down. I forget the name, wow. the, the street that he's on, but I know the Walt Disney Studio was right down the street from the house where Walt's uncle lived for for a while. So, oh, interesting. Well, yeah, there is Prospect Studios, um, which is ABC Disney. So maybe it's around there. That's, yeah. That's in Los Feliz. That's cool. I got to tell you where it is because I, I, I don't know where it is like street wise. I just drove by there one day and I'm like, this is it. This is the house. Um, you got to work with Cedric the Entertainer, the you know, comedian in the neighborhood. How was it working with Cedric? Is it, I get this. I get a lot of people who are like when you see someone like a Kevin Hart or Cedric the Entertainer, they take over the show in a way where you can't just control yourself, but but laugh so much because they're just so funny. Was it like that working with Cedric the Entertainer? Um, thankfully, I did not laugh in any of the takes. <laughs> um, but um, I think what was really cool about working on a multicam is they do. I was on that set for, I believe, three days. Okay. And they do two days of rehearsal before they shoot. And they work it like a play. So when they do rehearsals, they – and it's all on one set. It's on one stage. Um, so they um, they do the full episode all together. Oh, wow. Um, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, they rehearse it. They start with the, you know, the cold open or the teaser. And then they go to scene one, scene two, scene three, whatever. And we're all, like, traveling in the set together. Um which I thought was so cool. Um, yeah, and then and then the third day is like when we start shooting. Um, wow. Yeah, so that was really cool. Nice. If you had to pick a genre of, of TV or film, um, comedy, drama, what would you what would you, Cosima, feel comfortable playing? I mean, the best of both worlds and do a dramedy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. 
it's it's so hard it's like choosing between like two of your kids um I, I love both drama and comedy I've I did spend a lot of time in LA and like in the, in the comedy scene I did stand up I did improv oh wow yeah, um, for some reason, I feel like my heart pulls a little bit more towards drama, okay. um, but I, I love both of them, and I think that's what's cool about a dramedy is you can do both. Well, your character Gabby is pretty, it's pretty, it's kind of like a drama. You know, you play the serious role in The Cleaning Lady. Um, if I ask this question to a lot of the guests that I have, if you can pick a movie or a play and be that main character in a movie or a play, what would that movie be? Hmm, that's a great, great question. Um, I know it's one of those questions where it's like, you know, I'm always thinking like if I had a role or if someone said, hey, Eric, jump in a movie and we want you to play the leading role in this movie. I mean, I'm a sci-fi guy, so it's always going to be something star Wars or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if I had a lightsaber in my hand, I'd be like, yes, or, or I can even do something, you know, Disney wise. If there was a live action Disney film that, that I would do, that's just me, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, I'm a big Shakespeare nerd, so maybe, you know, Lady Macbeth or something nice. like that. Nice. Um, there was a there was a Charlize Theron movie that came out a few years ago, and I I felt really drawn to one of the characters, the character she played, and I don't remember the name of the the movie. Um, it was um, yeah, one where she played like a a author who was like a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that movie which I don't know the name of, which is super helpful right now. That's all right. That's all right. It's, I mean, you as a you as an actress in LA doing the things that you do, inspiring all these young ladies that, you know, Hey, I can do this. If I can do this now, you started at six, you know, you're, you're, you did commercials and now you're in this big network, you know, Fox doing the cleaning lady. And the good thing about your character is, they didn't kill you off. So we're going to see you again. You know, you're, you're definitely going to come back. You have kids that you have to take care of. So. <laughs> um, how was it on the set there? I see you guys, you know, I follow a lot of, um, you know, Miranda's group, you know, Martha's group, Elodie's group. How was it on the set with you guys? You guys look like you guys are always having fun. You guys are having a blast. How was it? Is it like that? Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was like one of the funnest sets I've ever been on. Um, and that was largely because uh martha and elodie were so awesome yeah. like they made me feel so welcome and yeah a part of the gang like from day one like um i only had one day on set in episode two and i was like just that one day i was like this is one of the best sets i've ever been on and i love the cast so i was super excited to be back for episode five and yeah that was like four days um and yeah like like bonding for sure. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was definitely like a really fun set to be a part of. It looks fun. Even when you guys are on set and you're good, you guys are showing us that just that scene, you know, um, uh, episode five, when you guys were cleaning the bus, I mean, did they tell you, Hey, act like you're having fun or did you guys just go ahead and act, you know, act crazy? That bus was super hot. Um, I bet it <laughs> so was. It was, that was, and it was very, like, cramped. So it was, there was a little bit of some claustrophobic <laughs> vibes going on. Um, it, it was very fun. Um, the thing about, like, shooting anything is you have to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So I think it was, like, by the 15th million time that we were singing, girls just want to <laughs> have fun. We were maybe a little bit tired, but um, but it was still, I mean, it was like, how often do you get to like be on a bus and just dance around with other yes. girls? Like, and, you know, it, it was awesome. We got one comment here from Douglas who, who constantly, who was on my show all the time. And he just says, Aloha, everyone loves the show. Thank you, Douglas, for jumping on. He's watching over on the YouTube channel. Um, the name Cosima, when I, when I first spoke to you, I, for some reason, I kept wanting to say Cosima, but then 
you said it's Cosima. Where does that name come from? It's a name that I've probably heard once, but I never had to say over and over and over again. I was watching one of your YouTubes where you guys were doing a movie review, um, and I forget the guy's name, and he just kept going, Cosima Cabrera, Cosima Cabrera. That's how I was right before you got on. I was just like, Cosima, Cosima. <laughs> where does the name come from? It's a, it's a pretty name. Um, I believe it's Italian. My dad believed it was Greek, um, but... I think it, so it comes from the word cosmos so I guess the root of it is Greek but it's a com I believe a more common Italian name um so it means cosmic of the cosmos nice. and um my dad liked the name because he saw a movie um and one of the characters was named Cosima um uh and uh yeah decided he wanted to name me that and um it was interesting because the, the movie was based on an Alan Dershowitz book, and it was a, based on real life. It was about, I think, a murderer and his, his family, and Cosima was his daughter, and they had, like, a weird close connection. Um, and this comes full circle because when I went to college um, – Thank you. Beautiful name. Thank you. Um, when I went to college my freshman year, I went to Yale and um, one of my first like acting classes, um, Alan Dershowitz's daughter was in the wow. class. And I didn't actually know. I, I knew it was based on some character in a movie, but I didn't know it was like an Alan Dershowitz film sc screenplay based on his book um, until my mom told me that. And she was like, yeah, you're in a class with Alan uh, Dershowitz's daughter that his her father is connected to how you got your name so wow. that was a, that, that was a weird like full full circle full moment. circle nice nice I mean it's a pretty name it's like again you know it's one of those names where when I saw your name I'm like okay I can't luckily your last name is easy to, easy to pronounce um if you had a last name that's difficult to pronounce I definitely would have been stuttering with the first and last name um what are some of the difficulties you have as an actress? What are the, the, the things that, you know, when you get into an audition, what are some of the struggles and the, the hardship, I guess you can say, when it comes to being an actress? I mean, the mere fact that it's extremely competitive can be challenging, but at the same time, it's also what makes it rewarding. Um, uh, like for the average person, I don't think, the average person knows it's very difficult, but yeah. they don't know like the nitty gritty and the details. Like for one line on television, an actor has to beat out about 4,000 other actors. Wow. Like, because before even getting the audition for just one line on television, I mean, depending on the show and everything, uh, uh, casting directors will get 2,000 to upwards of 4,000 submissions. Wow. So they have to narrow it down to... You know, when it was in person, like 20 to 40 people, uh, now that it's like not as much in person and more self-tapes, it might be a little bit more. But it's like statistically you have half of a 1% chance of just getting an audition. And those are like the actors who have agents. Yeah. So like even there, there being one in 4,000 like is is – you're already like ahead of the pack. And so like just half of a 1% chance just to get an audition. So it's, it's a victory just to get an audition. It may not feel like it. It may feel like a, just another part that you're getting rejected from, but like just, just to get that far is a victory. And then like, then once you have gotten it still like one out of 20, 40, if it's like a series regular and they might be seeing hundreds of people, who knows? Like it's still like, statistically it's a miracle when you book any job um so it's like that part um is challenging it also makes it super exciting when you do book a job i've gone uh years without booking a job at all like um you know in 2016 i booked like six different things had an amazing year three tv shows three movies um then went i think two and a half years before I booked another job. Oh, wow. Um, so, and that's like common just simply because of like the statistical odds of like working. Um, yeah. So you have to be 
in it for the long haul. You have to be um, you, you, comfortable with rejection. Um, you have to be, um, yeah, and, and it's also, like, not getting uh, attached, you know, to, like, a, a role that you audition for. It's, like, you kind of put your heart and soul into something. Like, usually you get one to two days, three days, four days, you know, maybe if you're lucky to turn something in. And you, like, put your heart and soul into that thing for a couple days, and then you just send it off, let it go. Nine times out of ten, you won't ever hear wow. back anything. Um, like, I remember I had a callback for a movie um, once, and the casting director had requested several self tapes for me before that. This was the first time I think I was going in person for a callback with her and the directors and producers were there. And the the director just said like, Oh, so nice to meet you. We've seen your tapes so many times. And I had no clue. Wow. I was like, who, none of us have any idea what, what's happening to them. We we like, no, like at least the associate or the, casting director maybe watches it once but beyond that we have absolutely no clue Uh like you know or even like how long they're watching it like if they watch 30 seconds decide no we're done like absolutely no clue so it's a it's a it's a very unusual profession that requires like patience perseverance grit you know the the ability to not take rejection personally like that's that's a skill in and of itself so Um, but you know, that's what also makes it rewarding at the same time. Yeah. You've been doing this since six, since the age of six. So I'm pretty sure your skin is thicker than, than others when it comes to, you know, you uh, auditioning for a part and them saying, no, we're not going to go with you. And you're just like, okay, on to the next, um, you know, for some people, you know, with me, I don't take rejection well, (laughs) so I'd probably be that guy that's going to be moping for like a month before I finally says, all right, let's try again in a different way. But that's, that's the, the, the backstory of when it comes to actors and actresses that they don't, you know, Mark Ruffalo said it, how many, what he did, how many auditions just to get one role, before he became, you know, the Mark Ruffalo that we know. And it's like, we don't see that. We all we see is you guys on the screen, you know, you doing the best you can, you know, providing for us, showing us that like, wow, you know, Cosima's doing a great job here. But then we don't see what you had to do, what you had to, where you, what you, who you, I don't want to say step on, but, you know, the people you had to step on to get to the, the character that you, that you have. And, and that's what I love about, you know, seeing you guys on TV, it's like, I see you on TV and I see that, wow, you're there, you made it, but we don't see the back end of it, like what you had to do. And I'm pretty sure it's the same thing with the cleaning lady. Um, you, the auditions you had to get through just to get Gabby was probably, there was probably a what, 10 or 15 Gabby's that, that auditioned for that role, right? For the initial self tape, it could have been, I, 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 yeah, I have no idea, but it could have been as much as 40, 50. Yeah. And then for the callback, maybe 10. I don't, I, I have, see, we have no clue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it does, I think you get more used to rejection the more you do it, but it's still, it's still always hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this. If you could work with anybody right now, TV, movie, who would it be? <laughs> um, uh, uh, was your guess going to be Drew Barrymore? Drew Barrymore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be cool. That yeah. would be really cool. I mean, they need uh, to do a Charlie's Angels reboot, reboot right? And then, you know. Well, I mean, I think I'd be great. I think you'd be great. <laughs> I mean, you know. Well, what is yeah. it? There's a blonde, a brunette, and, uh, and a. Is it is it dark haired? Is that how the Charlie's Angels work? Is that how they did it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then there was the latest one. There was Kristen Stewart, Stewart, right? Yeah, yeah. And and then there was. I don't think they've ever had a Latina Charlie's Angels. So I'm gonna be the first one. There you go. I mean, <laughs> Charlie's Angels was ba- based in L.A. Come on, you have to have a Latina, Char- you know, a Lati- Latina okay. angel, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. They and they can actually make your name Angel. It's like, hey, my name is Angel. You know, you know. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm it's so funny. Like Charlie is actually the name I used to go by when I was when I was like 12 in one of my acting classes. They I don't think they like were they were confused by my name. So I just said, just call me Charlie because I think I was like into Charlie's Angels or something. <laughs> um, so I'm actually like writing a TV series myself right now. And Charlie is the name for that. It's based on my life. Charlie is the name for the character nice. I'm based off of. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And that's what I love about, you know, you actors. And, and I brought this up before in a couple of the interviews that I had. You can't just really devote on acting. You got to find another niche. And a lot of actors are writers. A lot of writers are producers. Um, what do you find more fulfilling for you, the acting part or the writing? They're both really fulfilling. Um, the thing about acting is or writing is you can you can't totally control if you know if, so, if someone picks up your pilot or whatever but you can control how much you write yeah. um like and so like for me like i've been working on this series i've been writing since like september of 2020 and like i've produced or written a lot of content um so that part like feels empowering. You can, but at the same time, like you can also act every day if you want to. Like ideally it helps to have another person. Yeah. Um so but you can do monologues every day. If like if you really just want to practice the craft of acting and you don't have an, the money for an acting class, do a monologue every day, put it on camera and you'll get better that way. Nice. Um yeah, they're they're very similar, um, very similar muscles. They're just like I guess slightly different parts of the body. It's kind of yeah. how I view them. Yeah, Cos Cosima Cabrera. Everyone who's watching, we have Cosima Cabrera here from the Cleaning Lady. Um, what's next for you? What's what's next? You did mention you're doing some writing. You're, you're doing some mm -hmm. writing. What's next? Um, small screen or big screen? Is there anything you can share with us? Um, well, with, with my writing, I do have a producer who's shopping my pilot. It hasn't been picked up yet, but I, I hope it does, nice. um, get picked up. Um, that would be, that would be my dream to answer your question. Like dream role is my pilot gets picked up and I'm starring in the series that I've written. Um, that would be dream. I did shoot, I was working on set for like a major FX TV show last week. Um, that I can't say the name of yet, and I don't know when it's going to be released. But um, but yeah, that nice. that will be coming out eventually. Um, and then in the meantime, I'm auditioning and um, putting vibes out there that I book another job um, and or get get put back on the cleaning lady if it gets re renewed. You'll, so you'll, you'll be. I mean, it's it's a it's a loose end that they need to they need to you know show us. I mean. T tonight is the season finale where everyone's already anticipating what's going to happen um but i'd like them to start season two on a, a on a nice note with you know you coming back and you know fee or martha has your kids and you giving them a nice big hug and just you know giving that martha the the wink like thank you thank you for keeping an eye on my kids i mean that's something that we we would we would we as fans would love to see i would definitely like to see that and that way we're not asking you know hey is what happened to gabby she's still right. you know she's still not you know i'm hoping season two gets picked up and i'm hoping you know you are back there um and we see more of you in the future um i, um, I want to thank you for jumping on i want to thank you for sharing your story thank you for doing all that um um, you are definitely welcome back to jump back on, you know, this show anytime you want. And you want to, when that new show comes, drops on FX, if you want to talk about it, you know, definitely, you're definitely more than welcome to jump back on the show anytime you want to, to do all that. Thank you. It was so much fun being a part of this. Oh man. You don't just It's, it's one of those things. And, you know, I had Josette on last week and she described, um, Getting a part is like winning the lottery, right? And she said, like, when you get a part, even at a callback, so winning the lottery. This is my lottery right here. This, to me, when I get a response back from you guys and you're like, yeah, I'd be more than happy to do it. I'm like, wow. You know, I'm just the guy who's doing this and I'm doing it. It started off with Martha that came down to Miranda. And I was like, you know what? Let me see who I can get. And let me see who is <laughs> actually going to say yes. 
And there's a few of you guys who are like, yeah, I'll be more than happy to share the story with you. And it's just one of those things where I'm not part of the filming, but I feel like I'm part of the family in a sense. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, um, totally. I have another one coming on Wednesday. I have another guest coming on on Wednesday. So, so by Wednesday, the show will be over. So we'll be able to talk more about what's going on. I know you can't talk about the finale today and you better not bring it up because I don't want to hear it. No spoilers, please. <laughs> no spoilers please but good luck in the future good luck in what you're doing um moving forward and again if you're definitely you're definitely more than welcome to come back on the show anytime you want thank you i look forward to being back all right cosima cabrera everyone here on the daily podcast you can catch her on the cleaning lady she's on episode five the icebox you guys got to watch that icebox episode if you guys have hulu or even if you have xfinity just say the cleaning lady in your remote and then look for episode five, the icebox. I mean, just that scene when you like when when Elodie like pops your finger back in. I'm like, ooh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, it, it was a good episode, and it's one of those things where you you know you definitely shined in that episode. And you know, I would definitely want to see you back on. You know, Miranda, we want her back on season two, so bring her back on season two, Miranda. <laughs> so. <laughs> thank you Kosama thank you for coming on and again um, good luck in the future and you know hope to talk to you soon you too thank you so much thank you bye 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 all right that's Kosama Cabrera right there I want to thank you guys for jumping on thank you guys for watching thank you guys Douglas thank you for always um, throwing out comments um, like that and thank you guys for jumping on um, definitely catch the cleaning lady it's on tonight here in the Bay Area it's on at 9 nine uh, on fox um go ahead and um watch it then if you guys haven't watched the whole episode of the cleaning lady go ahead and download it either on hulu or xfinity like i said um this podcast will be uploaded on my daily podcast channel um available on all podcast platforms apple google podcast spotify and app and amazon you could also watch the video either on my facebook but i do a lot of editing and i'm gonna upload it on my youtube channel um you can follow me on the daily vlogs with me eric b it's right there and the videos will be there in the next 20 30 minutes depending on how hungry i am and how how quick i can edit but until next time i want to thank you guys for watching thank you guys for jumping on i'm gonna end the live stream now thanks for watching guys Thank you for listening. You've been listening to The Daily Podcast with Eric B.